In the summer of 2006, I needed to find a field site. I was a master's student in archaeology at the time, and I wanted to see the world, broaden my horizons, all that. So my local university was going to be of little help. I did what any normal person would do, and I took to the interwebs. Here I found a field director who had a seemingly great archaeological site. He was looking for students, free labor, to accompany him, and the site seemingly had it all. It was in the Peruvian desert. It was previously undiscovered, and there was going to be evidence of ancient decapitations. You know, real Indiana Jones. So I did what any normal graduate student would do, given that opportunity, and I booked the next flight to South America without ever meeting any of these individuals. I arrive in the capital city of Lima. I meet the field director. He's nice enough. His wife is there, who's also an archaeologist. And then I meet the 30 undergraduate students he's managed to recruit, all female. <laughs> Archaeologists are women. Um, so, so these students, though, all came from the same university, and they were already friends with each other. And so I'm sort of the outsider. Um, I've also decided I must be too smart for these jerks because I have a master's degree, so I, I don't make many friends on this trip. We take an eight-hour bus ride to our field site in Peru, made much more miserable by my constant heaving because I was the only one throwing up on this bus ride. But when we get to the field site, it's pretty great. We eat quinoa before it's cool. We also eat guinea pigs, which adorably lived in the house with us. <laughs> the excavation is also as exciting as I had imagined it would be. The very first day, I find a mummified foot. Suck on that, cool girls. The rest of the trip is equally eventful. We find the remains of 40 decapitated individuals at this site, a cross-section of a population of people that probably lived in the area at the time, which was about 2,000 years ago. There's men, there's women, there's elderly, there's even babies that have been decapitated. And although that might sound terrible to you, it was awesome to us. <laughs> and by the end of the field season, we were all feeling like Indiana Jones. So just as quickly as it had began, it ended. A one-month field season is over. We're riding back to Lima for two days of fun, shopping, packing, before we head home to our respective uh, countries. In this last night, one of the other uncool girls decided to bring a sex partner back with her who promptly robbed her of all of her belongings, including her passport and her money. So the next day, I go with her to the police station, not because I speak any Spanish, but because I had nothing else to do. So, <laughs> so we're making this uh, police statement in English, and we're asked, what are you doing here? Are you visiting someone? Are you tourists? You know, just so we know who you are and why you're here. Oh, we've just come in from a field excavation. We're on our way out. Could you bring your field director down here to answer some questions? Sure. We call him up, and he's at the police station in 20 minutes, where two police officers come out and arrest him in the lobby. They don't even take him away to do it behind closed doors. They arrest him in front of everybody. Clearly, my Spanish is worse than I thought. Sorry, guys, there's been a miscommunication. That's not the guy who robbed my friend. That's our field director. It becomes clear that this was no mistake. We're separated into two inter interrogation rooms, this other gal and I. And from the nature of the questioning, it becomes very clear that he is being accused of a sexual assault of one or maybe more of the girls on our trip. This is pretty common in, in archaeology, where 32% of individuals experience some sort of sexual assault or harassment in the field. The experience was pretty horrifying. We don't know what's going on. We don't know who this has happened to. We don't know if we're going to be stuck here in Peru, if we have to testify what our legal rights are. We don't have English-speaking lawyers. Eventually, we're released. We fly home in our respective directions. And when I return, I tell my advisor the harrowing end to the story. Yeah, I guess the field season was great, but uh, this terrible stuff happened at the end. And she says, well, of course it did, Brittany. What were you thinking going on a trip with someone you didn't know? some man from a different university? And why didn't you form friends with any of those girls? They could have protected you from assault. 
hadn't really thought of that. Two days later, I get a call from an investigator from this, uh, the field director's university where he teaches, and she's got questions about my police report. I make another statement. I don't realize I'm under no obligation to do so. I don't realize my name will be put on the statement and that it will become public record. I'm also not making a report of an assault. I'm reporting what any of the women in this audience and backstage and everywhere have probably experienced run-of-the-mill sexual harassment, you know, getting handsy, talking pervy. It was normal to me at the time. It's normal to a lot of us. So that was the nature of my report. I wasn't particularly concerned about its content until it got in the hands of the field director's wife. She took some issue to my statements. She started writing me handwritten letters, emailing me, even calling me, because as a graduate student, all of my contact information is available on these interwebs so that my students can contact me. She's harassing me, I'm a lying I need to retract my hurtful lies. She knew I was gonna be a problem. She continues harassing me for years, years. I finally graduate, I become a professor. She gets my new contact information. She's harassing me over five years. It makes me wonder, what degree of harassment did the, did the assault victim experience? Is she still harassing her? And what about the victim blaming I received from my advisor? Is it true that I brought this on myself because I traveled while being female? I learned a lot on that trip. And the one thing I'll take away with me forever is how all of us, men and women, intentionally and unintentionally contribute to this culture that allows for the victimization of women. We must all stand undivided to let society know that we will not allow unequal treatment because women are not lesser than and we are all equal too.